Today we want to understand precession. What we want to understand is when you let go of a bicycle wheel and gravity just pulls it down like that. Right? It just falls just like you'd expect it to. Why is it that when you spin the wheel and let it go, doesn't it fall, but it actually processes around in a circle like this? We can start by explaining this in terms of if we have a mass that's, that we put a force on and we push on it, it's going to get an impulse because we remember force is equal to the rate of change, change in momentum or a change in time. And so if we push on something, we're going to get some change in momentum, which is just equal to the force times delta t. And certainly, certainly kilogram meters per second is the same as a newton second. So if we push on something with the force and it gets some change in momentum, in this direction. Now, if it wasn't moving at first, it's going to end up moving in this direction. Because that change in momentum is all the momentum it has now. So change in momentum is the final momentum is in this direction. But how about if the object is moving already? What if the object is moving, let's say, in this direction with some speed v naught? And more importantly, we want to express this in terms of p naught. So it has some momentum in this direction. Now, when we push on it with some force, we get some change in momentum, some impulse in this direction. But the final momentum. is equal to the initial momentum plus this change plus this impulse. And so when we add these like vectors, we have p naught, we have p naught plus this impulse is equal to the final momentum. And this is what we see in everyday life. If someone pushes on an object and it's already moving, the result will not be that the object moves in this direction, but the object moves in some direction like this. Because it already has some momentum, you give it an impulse, and this is final momentum. <clears throat> Similarly, if it's moving very fast, the momentum, the initial momentum would be very large. And so here's your initial momentum. And now you have your change in momentum. And you can see that the final momentum would almost be parallel to the initial momentum. And certainly, if you see a linebacker you know, in a football game running very, very, very fast and you hit him from the side, it doesn't change his direction that much. So how does this work for precession? So imagine, if you will, if there's a bicycle wheel. There's a bicycle wheel. And gravity is pulling down on it. And I'm holding it up right here with my hand, let's say. Here's the force of Pete. So you, we know what will happen the wheel will fall, it will rotate in this direction. And we can think of this as if between me pushing up here and gravity pulling down, we get an impulse delta p in this direction and an impulse here, delta p in this direction. And so as this moves that way and this moves that way, the wheel falls. 
if we look at the wheel from above, what we see is the force of peat is pushing up out of the paper and the force of gravity, I'll put it right here, is pulling in, pushing into the paper. And so there's a net force on the top part of the wheel right here, whoops, out to the right. And there's a force and a change of momentum and impulse on the downside of the wheel to the left, just like here. Down to the left and up to the right. And so if we let the wheel go, this goes out, that goes in, and the wheel rotates around. However, if the wheel is spinning, let's say the wheel is spinning with the front part of the wheel going downward with some speed v naught, and that means this top part of the wheel is moving in this direction. So then what happens, this piece of mass has some p naught we could think of. And when it gets this impulse to the right, rather than just move off to the right, it moves off in this direction. Why? Because it has some p naught some initial momentum, and it gets this change in momentum. And so in moving off to this direction, what happens, rather than falling, the wheel, this mass, just moves out here and comes around like that. And we see that our direction of spinning has changed. And slowly the wheel migrates around this point most physicists explain this concept in angular terms. So let's try to do that. So what we know is if there's a force upward here and a force downward there, there's a net torque turning this in this direction, right? Like this. And that torque is then into the board. <clears throat> or looked at from above with a force upward and gravity down here, the torque is in this direction, right? Into the board, this way, when viewed from above. And then just like with the, the translational analog of momentum, angular momentum, we know torque, can be expressed as the change in angular momentum over change in time, right? Where angular momentum is just the moment of inertia times omega. And so when you put a torque on something for a period of time, there's a change in angular momentum, which is just equal to the torque times the amount of time you are applying that torque. And so if we take a wheel and I hold it up here and gravity pulls it down, there's going to be a change of angular momentum in this direction. So we can write down here, yeah, there's going to be a change of angular momentum. Yeah. So we can say if the torque is into the board for a period of time, then there's going to be a net angular momentum increase in this direction. And sure enough, when you let that wheel drop, it's going to have some angular momentum in this direction and it's going to rotate like that. However, if the wheel is already spinning, then the final angular momentum, L final, is not just the change of angular momentum due to this angular impulse of torque. It's going to be the initial angular momentum plus that impulse, that rotational impulse. And so what happens is, if this thing's spinning now, right, this part is coming down, right, so omega is in that direction, right, very strong angular momentum in that direction. <clears throat> we have to add this little change of angular momentum 
to that and it gets pushed back into the board or looking at it from above if we have some omega naught there's an initial L naught of initial angular momentum and so the angular impulse is just this torque times delta T so delta L is going to be in this direction too so after gravity acts on this wheel for a bit the final angular momentum is going to be L naught plus the angular impulse due to the torque of gravity delta L L final and so what you see and looking from above when gravity is pushing down here and you're pulling up what you see is that little bit of delta L is constantly being added to L naught and you see the wheel just process travel in this direction of course if the wheel was spinning in the other direction then L naught would be in that direction and delta L would still be up because gravity doesn't change and the wheel would process in the other direction it would this this angular momentum vector would get pushed that way and the wheel would process in the opposite direction so you now have to go home and pick up a bicycle wheel and do this and similarly understand that if we spin the wheel faster that means your initial angular momentum is bigger and so that change of angular momentum is going to be smaller in comparison and what will that do to this angle it should process then much slower because that large angular momentum is just like the large momentum of the linebacker that when you push it it doesn't change direction very much